your friends say, I have come with open heart. I have come and with open heart. Oh, let the nation work. Can you pick another wonderful friend and tell the person, say, I have come with open heart. God's word, the word of God will gain root in our hearts, will spring forth and prosper in our lives in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, and glory to the Holy Spirit. And the people of God say seven sounded amen. God bless you. Can I have your seat, teachers? You have 25 minutes. the scriptures because we just need to help our time. Praise the living Jesus. So if you have this manner, please turn to page 68. Page 68. Um, we're looking at a man, a priest. He was not just a man, he was a man of God. Praise the Lord. We're looking at Eli. How many of us are familiar with the story of Eli? a priest. He was from that lineage of, like God himself chose him to be the priest. Praise the living Jesus. And um, he was someone, I will use the word, someone that God loved. I will tell you why I said so in the course of our teaching. Praise the Lord. So let's continue. Eli, the priest. A memory verse here is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. I'm going to be reading from here. Proverbs 22, verse 6. And it says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I take that again. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I'm going to briefly explain to us what is linking this particular memory verse to the story of Eli. Eli had two sons. And um, he was a priest. Of God, he was working at the tabernacle of Christ, and um, he had two sons. And um, let me say, he corrected his child, his children, rather. He corrected them, but he did not discipline them. In the course of this teaching, you understand why I said he corrected them. He, he said, like you know, when you talk to a child, oh, you don't do this, so if you keep doing this, so if you sin against man, man will forgive. If you sin against God, who will deliver thee? Who will intrude? So he corrected his children, but he did not go the extra mile. He didn't discipline them. Let's continue. I'm going to be reading from here. Then our text is from the book of First Samuel, chapter one to four. That I said, let's open our Bible to the book of First Samuel. Now let me let me read from this manual here. Eli in the Bible was a Jewish priest. He was a Jew. You know the Jew? He was a Jewish priest who lived in the days of the judges and served God at the tabernacle in Shiloh. 
Praise the Lord. How many of us are familiar with the Washilo? How many of us are familiar with the Washilo? Thank you. Okay, let's continue. A city near the hill country of Ephraim. According to the, to the book of 1 Samuel 1, verse 1 and 3, Eli is best remembered for his blessing on Samuel's mother and for the part he played in Samuel's first prophetic encounter. Praise the living Jesus. I will quickly explain that to us. The part Eli played, right, on Samuel's mother. Anna was barren. Anna is Samuel's mother. How many of us are aware of that? Anna was Samuel's mother. And Anna was barren for years. And every year, her husband, Ekana, had two wives. Hannah was the first wife, and there's another wife. And then Pen uh, Penina, yeah. So, and there were two of them. And anytime they go to Shiloh to pray, they go to Shiloh every year to, to pray. Anna would cry unto God. Because one of the things that, that um, I, I picked from her story was that when they go to Shiloh, and Ekana, her husband, when he wants to give his own, like, blessings or some portions, he will give the second wife more. You know why? Because the second wife had children. And Hannah didn't have anyone. But I, I, tell, I tell us this morning that God, God was the one that shot the womb of Anna. And I believe God had a reason for doing that. And Anna would cry unto God. And Anna kept on, you know, every year they would go and she would pray. And on this particular Shiloh, this particular time when she went to pray, when she was praying, she was not audible, right? And Eli was seeing that her mouth is moving. At some point, Eli was even like, if I had even told her, like, are you drunk? By this time of the day, are you drunk? And Anna said, no, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman who is pained. You know when somebody's barren, you know what, what it feels like not to have a child. And she was like, no, I'm not barren. I'm, I'm actually talking to God about my pain. And Eli made a statement to her. And Eli said, your prayers are answered. Praise the living Jesus. And Anna took him. Praise the Lord. So I will make reference to Eli as someone who sealed Hannah's prayer. Anna was always praying. She was always going to Shiloh to pray. Praise the Lord. But Eli was the one that sealed her prayer. Praise the living Jesus. And then for the part he played during Samuel's first prophetic encounter. You know when God was trying to talk to Samuel. Samuel was very tender and he didn't even know who was far. God called him. He didn't know who was calling him. When God called him at first, he ran to Eli. Now let me just quickly explain this. When Anna took in, eh, although Anna, Anna had already made a vow to God and said, if God will bless her with a son, she is going to dedicate that son to serve God. And when um, Anna gave birth, she had to fulfill her vow. So she took the son, which is Samuel, and took the baby to Eli so that El to, to fulfill her own part of the vow. And Eli was Samuel's mentor. Praise the living Jesus. So Samuel stayed with Eli. Do you understand? So now, when God called Samuel, Samuel will run to Eli. Ah, did you call me? And Eli will say, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And when he came to Samuel the second time, did you call me? Ah, did you call me? So, so, so Eli was that like, when you hear that call again, say, Lord, I'm, I'm here. Speak, for your servant does what he hear it. And when God called him again, and that was what, that was when Samuel said, Lord, go ahead, I can hear. Praise the living in Jesus. So it was one that made Samuel to understand that it was God that was calling him because Samuel didn't know that God was the one that was calling him. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. The story of Eli is told in 1 Samuel verse 1 to 4. He was the priest in the house of the Lord at Shiloh. This house must have been a sanctuary incorporating the tabernacle. Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Judges 8 verse 31. I take that again. Joshua 18 verse 1. Judges 18 verse 31. Some additional structure and the ark, that's according to the book of 1 Samuel 4 verse 3, Eli ancestry is not given. But by comparing the book of 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 27 with 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles 2 verse 24 verse 3, we can deduce that Phinehas, his son, and therefore Eli himself was descendant of Tamar, the youngest son of Aaron. Who is Aaron? Who knows Aaron? Thank you. Praise the living Jesus. So he was from the descendant of the youngest son of Aaron. That's Eli. Let's continue. Because of the evil conduct of Eli's son, which he did not properly correct, a man of God came to make a pronouncement of doom, which was also confirmed to Samuel by revelation. Okay, let somebody read um, 1 Samuel chapter 3. That's why I said we should open there. From verse 11 to 14. 
If you are there, please read for us. 1 Samuel 3, verse 11 to 14. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a new thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house when I begin. I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his son made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning, and he opened the door of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared, the, Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here I am. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord had said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee. And more also, if thou hide anything from me, all the things that he has said unto thee. And someone told him every, every week, and eat nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. Thank you. Thank you. Did you see Eli's response? He is the Lord. Let him do what he met, what he, what he deems fit as God. Before I go to that, before I explain that scripture to us, there's another one I want to, I want us to look at. Let's open our Bibles to the book of First Samuel. The same First Samuel, chapter two, First Samuel two, verse twenty-seven. If you read this scripture from verse 27, let me just take one. Let me just take like two or three lines, uh, points there, 27. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they, when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Right? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel, of Israel to be my priest? To offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear effort before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offering made by fire of the children of Israel? Verse 29, wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in, in my habitation, and honorize thy son above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of, my, of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, said be it far from me. For, for them that honoreth me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. If you continue the scripture down, you will find out that there was a warning from, the, from, from God. God sent a man of God to warn a lie of the atrocities that his sons were committing. Right? They were sleeping with women in the tabernacle. They were, they were, they were stealing things that, 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 were, that the Israelites sacrificed to God, as in they were taking it confidently. And the truth of it is that Eli was aware, because at some point, he walked up to the children and said to them, what is this I'm, I'm, I'm hearing? That you people are taking what you are not supposed to take. Praise the living Jesus. He just told them and he said, if you sin against man, man will forgive. But if you sin against God, who will entreat for you? Who will plead for you? You know what it means when you, when you sin against God? Praise the living Jesus. And that was it. And he told them they should stop. But the children did not hack him. He could have done more. He could have done more. He could have even interceded for them in the place of prayer. Now, let me shock you. When, when um, God spoke to Samuel, and God still repeated the same prophecy to Samuel, and Eli called Samuel and said, what did God tell you? Please tell me everything. And, El and Samuel told Eli everything. He did not even withhold any. And now, the, look at the response of Eli. That response to me, I will use the word, it was nonchalant. Like, you are God, you can do whatever you want to do. Praise the living Jesus. What does that mean? How can you look at? God is saying that, look at what your sons are doing. This thing they are doing is a sin. Teachers, we have know, 10 minutes more. You know Please, can you note you have you 10 minutes God, more? Let him do whatever, it, what he deems fit as God. That was not a polite response. Now, let's go on. Because of the evil conduct of Eli's son, which he did not properly correct, a man of God came to make a pronouncement of doom, which was also confined by, to Samuel by revelation. This prophecy was partly fulfilled in the, in the death of Hophni and Phinehas. And part of the prophecy was that his two sons would die the same day. And they died the same day. And when Eli heard that his two sons were dead, and the ark of covenant, the ark of God, that was not supposed to leave that place has been stolen, has been taken. 
has been taken. Not that even the ark was not stolen. It was just that the children, you know, the atrocity that they, that, that, that they have committed, now led, he made a whole lot of things to happen. And even with the ark, and that ark was, okay, let me, yeah, let me say it was stolen, actually. You know, but one thing that stands out was that when immediately Eli heard of what happened, he fell because he was somebody that was fat. So he just fell and broke his neck and he died at the age of 98. But paraventure, he had interceded for his children. Or paraventure, when God gave him that prophecy, he might have, you know, gone to God in place of prayer and said, Lord, please have mercy upon me. Because even God told him that all his entire lineage would be wiped out. And he didn't. He just, told, he just said, let God do what he deems fit as God. That was not a good response. Praise the living Jesus. That was not a good response. Because in the first place, God was the one that ordained him and made him a priest. Praise the Lord. God chose him to be a priest. Praise the living Jesus. So immediately he had that. Even his second, his second son, um, wife was pregnant. And merely she had that, oh, the husband has been killed and that the ark has been, has, been took, has been taken. She went into labor. She gave birth to that child, but she herself did not survive. Praise the living Jesus. So it was a tragedy. Praise the Lord. So when God is warning us about something, Beloved, don't say he's God. Let him do what he pleases. No. Make amends. Because if God loved, not from the beginning, I said God loved Eli. If God loves you, God will talk to you. It is whom the Lord loves that the Lord will chastise. Praise the living Jesus. It is if the Lord loves you that the Lord will correct you. Praise the Lord. So our God is a merciful God. And he gave Eli that chance because God, God spoke to him. But he, didn't say, he did not do what he was supposed to do. Let's continue. Now, um, there is somebody, Abita, one person left from the, he was the last of Eli's house to be a priest. That's the last person in his lineage, Abita. And Abita worked when David became the priest. Abita worked with David, but when immediately Solomon took over, Solomon dismissed him. And that is to do what? To fulfill the prophecy. Let's check his, um, let's go to the strength and accomplishment of Eli. Please follow me as I read from here. So his credit, Eli judged Israel for, for 40 years. A testimony to the service he rendered to the people. So he served. He was a judge. He served. He served. Praise the living Jesus. Point two says, Eli comforted Hannah by reassuring her that the God of Israel will grant her petition. When she prayed for a child at Shiloh. I've already explained that to us. We can see that in the book of 1 Samuel 1 verse 17. Now, the third point here says, he kindly received the boy Samuel, whom Hannah had brought back to the Lord in fulfillment of her vow. I've explained that to us. Point four here says, he prayed for Elkanah and Hannah, asking that God would give them more children in place of, whom, in place of Samuel, whom they had joyfully given to the Lord. Let somebody open to the book of 1 Samuel. Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 2. This is from verse 20 to 30. We might not be able to take that. It's actually very long. But if you look at, if you read that scripture, 1 Samuel 2, verse 20 to 30, you will find out that God answered that prayer. And God gave Anna more children. You know why? Because Anna joyfully fulfilled her vow. The vow she made to God, she joyfully fulfilled her vow. Okay, let's check 1 Samuel 2, verse 21. Verse 21, if you are there, please, please read for us. 1 Samuel 2, 21. So that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters, and the children and the child Samuel grow before the Lord. Thank you. So that promise, Eli prayed for Hannah and uh, prayed to God and, and, and told God I should give Hannah more children. Why? Because the first seed that, it, that, she, that God gave to Hannah, Hannah has dedicated her child to serve God. Right? And now Eli now prayed and God answered that prayer. Praise the living Jesus. God gave Hannah three sons and two daughters. Point five says he guided the child Israel to correctly hear and respond to God's call. I've explained that to us. Praise the Lord. Point six here it says he helped the child Samuel to grow both morally, spiritually, and in favor with God and men. Praise the living Jesus. You will find out that if you look, if you read the, 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 the story of Samuel, I will encourage us to read the book of 1 Samuel from chapter 1 to chapter 4. If you read this, you will find out about the story of Eli. You find out, and the story of Samuel, you find out the Lord. You know, because of how um, Eli's children were, were behaving, right? When Samuel was under Eli, Eli went the extra mile, I believe so. He went the extra mile. Teachers, you have five minutes in more. In correcting them. 
in correcting the children and in correcting Samuel. Praise the Lord. He went the extra mile in putting as in he practically taught Samuel, as in he brought Samuel up from when he was little. Praise the living Jesus. And when the things that Samuel needed to know, you understand, to be able to to because God also made Samuel a priest. So it was it was under the the teachings of and the trainings of Eli. Look at this point. He says he helped Eli helped the child Samuel to grow up both morally, spiritually, and in favor with God and men. Praise the living Jesus. Um, there's something I want to tell us for parents who have children here, or the who are yet to you know who are yet to get married and all of that to have their own children. When you are training up a child, you start correcting the child from when the child is small. Whether you are a pastor or you are not a pastor. Eli was a priest, right? It doesn't matter. If you are a pastor, you, you have more work to do. Praise the living Jesus. Now, even if you are not a pastor, you should learn to correct your children from when they were small. I believe if Eli had done much more, praise the living Jesus. One thing I can tell you is that his wife's story was not, was not recorded. Praise the Lord. There was no point where they say uh, Eli and his wife corrected the children. Praise the Lord. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? It was only a lie. But the truth of it is that he could have done more. And then you have to start correcting your children from when they are small. There is a particular stage that, that children will get to. When you are telling them to do things, they will feel nonchalant about it. Because they've been doing that repeatedly and you did not correct them. So it's very important that we correct them when they are young. From small, you start training them. In fact, I will even say before, when you are pregnant of that child, start speaking. Start interceding. Start interceding for that child. And if you are not a pastor, you have more work to do because you are binding and casting and you are breaking, you are losing. When the man is protected, the wife is protected, you should not leave your children open like that. Pray for your children and then as you grow in ministry, carry them along. Don't leave your children to be whatever they want to be. And make out time for your children. Whether you are a pastor, a pastor's wife, whatever, no matter who you are, make out time. Watch your children. When you see things that they are doing or the things that they are saying that is not okay, Correct them, spank them, spare not the rod. The rod will not kill the child. Spare not the rod. Praise the living Jesus. So correct the child, and then when you now see that the thing is not becoming a regular thing, then you know that well, this this is beyond. You know when you correct them, also pray. There's also a place for prayer and intercession. You are the parent that gave birth to that child. Nobody can pray for their children more than the parent of, the, of, of that child. Because if that child becomes wayward tomorrow, which was what happened to Eli's sons, they became wayward and their waywardness killed their father. Are we getting what I'm saying? So don't pamper sin. Don't pamper iniquity. Don't pamper things that you should not pamper because it might end up destroying that person. Praise the Lord. And let me even tell you, you know that when the Ark of Covenant was taken, all the places for you to know how strong that covenant was, where that, 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 that ark of covenant was, all the places that that, that that ark of covenant were taken to, they were they were getting disaster. They, 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 but they moved it to like five different places and they were they were getting disaster. Immediately Eli had that, that ark has been taken. Just we have less than two minutes, please can start Eli praying had. now. You can start praying now. Do you know that even his second son's wife, Fina had said something. When she was in labor, right? And she had put to bed. Before she passed on, do you know what she said? That, that, that the glory has departed from Israel. Because you know why? Not because her husband died, but because of that act of covenant that has been taken from them. So the, as in, the wife was like, oh, because that act has left, that means the glory of the Lord has been taken from them. So please, whatever God has committed into your hands, ensure to keep it well. You might not value what you have. Beloved, let me tell you. You might not value what you have until when you lose it. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. So the Ark of Covenant went to different, different cities. And they were experiencing disaster, disaster. In fact, they had to, they had to return it. Praise the Lord. Our time is up. of hope give us strength help us go in this world where we run 
ancient words were guide us on. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope in this world where we run. Ancient words were guide. So we believe the word, ancient words, ever true, and it's changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, or oh, let the ancient words in. Can we just echo that? Lift your voice, ancient words ever true let the father hear you changing me the son is interested changing you let the holy spirit be blessed by that we have come with open with open hearts oh let the ancient words in i've been saved redeemed and delivered by the word of god put your hands together put your hands together put your hands together name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We continue in our service today as we go into our Bible reading. Can we place our right hand on our chest and say, Spirit of Revelation, rest upon me in the name of Jesus. According to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God rest upon me in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We are reading from Psalm 63. Psalm 63. From verse 1 to 11. If you are there, please say, I'm there. I'll be reading from here. Just follow me, please. Psalm 63. 1 to 11. I read. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul tasted for thee, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy hand. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the ninth watches. Verse 7, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Let's read that verse 8 again. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Verse 9, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. I thought I would hear a loud amen. amen. I'll take it again. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Amen. They shall fall by the sword. Amen. They shall be a portion of, for foxes. Amen. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweared by, by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. Let's go to that verse 8 again. And let's read it together. My soul followed after thee. Thy right hand upon me. Shall, the right hand upholdeth me. Let's take this prayer as we bring the Bible reading to a close. Say, and of God. And of God. That dwelt valiantly. Deliver my desired breakthroughs this week. In the name of Jesus and of God that dwell valiantly, deliver my desired breakthrough. 
deliver my desired breakthroughs this week. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Where you are standing, I just want, where you are sitting, I just want you to begin to bless the name of the Lord. I appreciate him for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even today, Sunday. Just look at the things that had happened so far, how God has sustained you, how he has been your provider, how he has guarded you. Just bless him. Father, we thank you this morning. Let your name be glorified. We appreciate you for everything you have done for us. Be thou exalted, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we've given thanks. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you because of your grace this morning. Thank you for a lot of testimonies that you have given us. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for preservation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. We give you all the praise. Lord, take all the glory in the name of Jesus. We soak all the testifiers and their testimonies in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let these following people come out. Sister Janeth, Sister Ruth, Sister Lydia, and Sister Tiwa. I read the first testimony. Brother Fisayomi is thanking God for coming through for him in his business. And also concerning his accommodation. I decree the Lord will come for you this week. The Lord will come for you this week. And when he comes for you, he will come through for you. In the name of Jesus. Sister Ellen, she is thankful for the completion and the success of our professional exam. Let's bless the name of the Lord with a clapping offering for that. Amen. Sister Oluwatosin is thanking God. For adding another year to her today. Bless the name of the Lord for her. Sister Oluwatosin is thankful to God for raising helpers for her from different quarters. I decree if your amen can be louder. Every help and helpers that you need in this season. Let the Lord bring them your way. In the name of Jesus. Sister Janet, please come on. Praise the Lord. I praise the name of the Lord because last week the Lord provided my younger sister a lucrative job and I tap into that anointing because I believe very soon God will provide for me a lucrative job as well in Jesus' name. And I praise the name of the Lord for last Sunday, the Sunday of miracle, the Sunday of anointing because I was thinking someone would send me 1,000 Abbey but he actually sent me money. I praise the name of the Lord because a life without miracle is a life of miserable. It's a life with miserable. I praise the name of the Lord because the Lord has removed miserability from my life. Praise the Lord. Let's bless the name of the Lord for that, Sister Ruth. Okay, let's take the other testimonies as I read. Sister Tabitha, she's thanking God for miracle money. If you are going to receive that, why can't you clap for Jesus? Because your own miracle money is coming. Sister Oluwashion, she's thankful to God for divine healing. She has been falling sick for some times and decided not to use any medication. Instead, she stick to using mana water and anointing oil. And today, somebody said today. She is fine to the glory of God. Secondly, she's thanking God for helping her and her family to complete a project. I pray for you. I don't know what the project represents. That success you need in that project, that material you need in that project, let the Lord provide for you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. Um... I'm Oko Lydia. I just want to thank God for granting me Johnny Mercy's true medical school. I gained admission to study medicine in 2015 to Unilag, and I've been in school since then. So I want to thank God because, um, well, it was supposed to end, the journey was supposed to end 2021, but due to COVID, eight month strike, so many strikes, and everything, I just want to thank God because I'm here today. I am standing as a doctor. I also want to thank God for my sister. My junior sister also gained admission to study dentistry, and um, she's also a doctor today. Praise the Lord. 
Wow. I break every yoke of satanic delay over your life. By this time next year, if you are here and you are yet to testify to that thing you have been waiting for, let the Lord bring it your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me read this before Sister, um, Sister Tiwa talks. I want to thank God for his replenishing power over my life. I never lack anything at the point where I am. And even at my lowest level, help always come for me. Praise God. Secondly, I was instructed to let go of something that was 70% of what I had. But God, somebody say, but God. Restore me in a greater fold. I decree the God of our father, Dr. D.K. Olukoya, will restore you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Sister Tiwa. Good morning, church. My name is Tiwa Lulua Daudu. I'm here to give God all the glory for all that he has done in my life. Three years ago, I told God that if he helps me to success, successfully finish my medical journey, I will come here in front of the church to give my testimony. So I got admission 2015 to study medicine through diploma. I want to thank God for all the steps of the way. He was there all along. I want to thank God for family. I want to thank God for friends he kept with me. I want to thank God for 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 level. I want to thank God because he was there all the way. There were times, especially COVID and um, the, that long eight month strike, they were the most depressive moment of my life. I want to thank God because he saw me through. There was one question I, I hate, I really hated answering, which was, when will you finish? It got to a point that it was, I stopped going to places, to uh, uh, my family, friends, houses, where those questions would probably be asked of me. Because myself, I do not know. I want to thank God that I stand before you today, a doctor. I know when I will finish, which is, I've, I've already done. I'll give God all the glory because it came true. It did come true for me, financially, emotionally. My me I didn't lose my mental health. I didn't lose my emotional health. I didn't lose my physical health. I didn't come out sick. I'll give God all the glory. Permit me to reintroduce myself. Earlier I told you I'm Tiwalulu Adaudu. My name is Daudu. Sorry, Dr. Daudu T.A. MBBS Lagos, the first of our name. Praise God. Wow, 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 wow. Do more for Jesus. Do more for Jesus. Do more for Jesus. I pray for somebody. Your name that will add honor to you will change today. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. My name is Ruth. I want to thank God for his provision and protection over my family. Last three weeks, I started having chest pain. And then after service um, last week, I wasn't sure if the pain was there again. So yesterday, when, when I was preparing to come for Riaza, I just remembered that during the week, I didn't um, feel the chest pain. So I want to bless God. Praise God. Wow, 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 wow. One thing I see about all this miracle is that God come in a strange way. Listen to what Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 18. It said, Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? I don't know who you are. Your family might not have a name. I don't know who you are. Even you might not have anybody. But the sovereign Lord, by his right hand of power, will stand up for you this morning and do you good. Anything that has ever held you down, anything that has ever delayed you, by the time you will testify, you will say, God, I thank you for how far you have taken me. If your amen can be louder seven times, I decree your stagnation has been broken now. In the name of Jesus. Let somebody shout this prayer point loud and clear. Say every yoke of stagnation and limitation. Over my life. Break by fire. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke of stagnation and limitation. Over my life. Break by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Break, 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 break.
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Some of you are already quiet. At this of in Jesus' name, <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, church. You're yeah, welcome in Jesus' name. I'd um, like to welcome you again to the MFM International Headquarters Youth Church, the place of his greater glory. Um, we like to recognize special people in our midst. This is your very first time worshiping with us. Can, you, can I see you just with a wave of hand? Your very first time here. Can you rise up on your feet, please, wherever you are? And the church, give them a God bless you applause. Can we cheer them up? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. Can we extend a warm welcome to them if you are beside them? Shake them and welcome them to church. We have a special seat for you. Our welcomers are trying to direct you to the sitting position. We appreciate you for coming. Shine upon you, be gracious to you. God for me, God bless you. If you know this song, sing and along with me. give you peace. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. They are practicing for this song, so they are to improvise. God bless you too, in Jesus' name. All right, I'd like to confirm to you that, you know, you, know, you guys, we have a special guest in our midst today, Sister Kweli Minubi. I'd like to confirm that she's already in the house, and very soon we'll bring her up. Um, it's not easy to do that journey, and we want to hear her testimony from London to Lagos. Some people have not even gone from Lagos to Abuja. <laughs> You know, it's not easy. Let's not, let's not lie, you know. So, you know, one of the things I used to tell people is that when you, most of the countries in West Africa, they are all fighting one war or the other. You know of countries in Niger, Senegal, you know, all of them have troubles. And somebody is bold enough to take that journey, you know. We want to hear her testimony. And she's already here to share with us. At the right time, she'll come on stage. And we pray that we'll all be blessed in Jesus' name. All right, IT, we have videos to watch. Um, IT, please. Are we ready? Okay. Fellow Nigerians, it is a good thing to be Nigerian. Fellow Nigerians, it is a good thing to be Nigerian. Good news. The Office of the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is organizing the National Fabric Fabric Competition. The The hashtag. One Nigeria Unity Fabric Competition. The aim is to create a fabric design that would be indigenous to Nigeria, showcasing our culture and unity. This competition is looking out for creativity, concept, and the message of unity. Open to Nigerian youths, both male and female, between the ages of 15 and 25 years. And guess what? You can apply where Wherever you are in the world, as long as you are Nigerian, the winner of this competition goes home with a cash prize of 25 million naira. Are you sure I will not apply for this competition? Submission of entries close on Sunday, 30th of June, 2024. Submit your entries by sending pictures of your designs via email to unityfabric.ofl24 at statehouse.gov. Dot ng making sure you capture all parts of your designs together let us unite nigeria all right Shines in the afternoon. Can never shine at night. Abi, Abi is. I wear a Remy. Do you know that's a soccer pizza? 
one that Wait, oh, is it that one that goes about talking in Paris? Mm -hmm. Of course, oh, Remy. Hey, what happened to you? I think he really likes me. Eh? What uh, is it? <laughs> is it about proverbs? I can speak proverbs too. Uh, yeah. Let me give you one. Uh, yeah. A food that you wish to be eaten will eventually be swallowed. Any <laughs> tone? <laughs> hey. hey. mm -hmm. I've noticed that. You've not been asking me for full stops anymore. <laughs> Kilo Shelley. Do you still have? Ah, uh, uh, is that why you're very shaky like this? Yes, now. Wait, oh. Is it that one that goes about? You're the business here now. Of course, oh, let me. Hey, what happened? I think he really likes me. Eh? <laughs> What's it? That smell darkness. Mm. Papa, take it there. Don't you smell it? I can't smell it. <laughs> the state of this darkness is really bad. I beg, go on, Rudy. You can't sweep up. Papa, I smell it. You can't sweep up. Mm hmm. Lalejo, Lokore, Lobiri, Lomade, Ati Agbalaga, and Yarai Lurirawo, people of Ilurirawo land. God bless you, Asenmiyo. Eh, people of Ilurirawo, no matter how heavy the body may be, the owner will still be able to carry. Eh, my people, the sun that shines in the afternoon can never shine at night. Abi, Abi, it is. Now we're all ready. Praise God. Do you know that handsome carpenter? Wait, oh, praise God. Is it that one that goes about talking in Paris? Can we appreciate the drama team for that beautiful video? Yeah. So um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. On the 28th of April, we're having our drama Sunday. If you're happy, can you give a clap off into Jesus? Drama Sunday, 28th of February, of April, sorry, will be at the main auditorium. So the flyers will be out very soon, so you can share with your friends and invite somebody. It promised to be a special occasion. And my prayer is that as you come, the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Let's listen to the following announcement. We have prayer request box that can be found at the front here by the entrance door of all A. Members should feel free to drop their prayer requests when they come for a Sunday service. There would be foundation and baptismal classes uh, today, immediately after the service, at the usual stands. Uh, this is from MFMCF Medilag. The activities are Monday's Bible study at the chapel by 6 p.m. every Tuesday. They have their glorious service at Edges Place by 6.15 p.m. Every Thursday, prayer meeting at Chapel, 6.15 p.m. MFM CF Yabatech would like to announce their services for the month. Tuesday, Bible study from 4.45 to 6.15 p.m. And Thursday's revival hour from 4.45 to 6.15 p.m. MFMC, MFMCF FCE, Uniben, Akoka, is announcing their fellowship time Tuesdays by 6 p.m. and Thursdays for revival hour. Location is beside Pupola O. We'd like to once again encourage members who are here to be part of the workforce to know that we desire to have them come on board and into the vineyard of God. There are lots of experiences, uh, glorious experience working with the Father. If you don't belong to any group, make sure you don't go home after service today. The Lord is in need of you. You can go see our counseling team immediately after the service. The counseling team are always in front here to receive you and to guide you into what group or which group you want to join. We have buses available to convey members from the following bus stops. We have buses at Yaba bus stop um, every morning. We have buses at Bariga bus stop, Unilag main campus, and Medilag campus. The buses will be available immediately after service to take you to the same locations. Please kindly adhere to the instructions of our transport officers and uh, please always respect them. Amen. We have jerry boxes that by the entry door, we like to encourage our members to assist the needy. Do drop your substance for the needy into the boxes. We also have an account number. If you need the account number, I can leave you see the gyrus team. 
at the middle of the hall. They always had their meetings there. This is a gentle reminder that we can pay our tithes and offering via the youth church account. The account details are at the back of the bulletin. Zeni Bank account 10164419289. There is a special prayer meeting and counseling session with Pastor Emmanuel Adimiji that takes place at the youth church auditorium opposite MFM Canopy Auditorium. Time is 10 a.m. to 12 noon. So whenever you want to see Pastor Ma, Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 12 noon is always available. Every stubborn situation shall bow in the name of Jesus. All right, once again, we'd like to announce that the Drama Sunday is on the 28th of April at the main auditorium. The main auditorium is at the, um, beside the Senate building. So let's take note. The service will not be holding yet on the 28th. Just go directly to the main auditorium. Once again, we'd like to play the video for the, um, from the, for the Ankara, please, so that people can take note. We want our people to participate in this program. The competition, I think, is okay. Please, fellow Nigerians, it is the a good of the thing to be Nigerian. Nigeria is organizing the, uh, the national fabric competition, the hashtag One Nigeria Unity Fabric Competition. The aim is to create a fabric design that would be indigenous to Nigeria, showcasing our culture and unity. This competition is looking out for creativity, concept, and the message of unity. Open to Nigerian youths, both male and female, between the ages of 15 and 25 years. And guess what? You can apply where Wherever you are in the world, as long as you are Nigerian, the winner of this competition goes home with a cash prize of 25 million naira. Are you sure I will not apply for this competition? Submission of entries close on Sunday, 30th of June 2024. Submit your entries by sending pictures of your designs via email to unityfabric.ofl24 at statehouse.gov. Dot ng making sure you capture all parts of your designs together let us unite nigeria so please can we take the dramas video again yeah. 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 Lama de Ati Agalaga and Yara Lurawo, people of Lurawo land. God, yes, yes, send you. Eh, people of Lurawo, no matter how heavy the body may be, the owner will still be able to carry. Eh, my people, the sun that shines in the afternoon can never shine at night. Abi, Abi, it is. Do you know that handsome carpenter? Wait, oh, is it that one that goes about talking in Paris? Mm -hmm. Of course, oh, Remy. Hey, what happened? I think he really likes me. Eh? What is it? <laughs> is it about proverbs? I can speak proverbs too. Oh, yeah. Let me give you one. Oh, yeah. A food that you wish to be eaten will eventually be swallowed. <laughs> hey. Any tone. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that. You've not been asking me for full stuffs anymore. <laughs> Kilo shelling. Do you still have? Ah, ah. Oluye, is that why your body is shaking like this? Yes, now. <laughs> Oluye, I'm not being that. I'm not being that. I'm not being that. I'm not being that. Don't you smell it? I can smell it. The state of this darkness is really bad. I beg, more really. You can't sweep up. Hey, Larando, you are done with that in the attitude of Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Just hold on, give me one minute. I'm in your mission room, Monica. I'm in your mission room, Monica. Oh, yeah, what? Jamie, not just on your plate. You know, Sheku. You know, Sheku. You want to. Yeah, do it. I'm going to go to the house. I'm 
I built it. I built it. Stay with me. Somebody, you come here and I don't know. I said it's okay. I am not. I am not. He couldn't jog it. He couldn't ready. He couldn't move. He couldn't do anything. Mon lo mo de ni o mela. Olo o mela kata kata. Ojo atun ari. All right, drama team, thank you again. We had to play that video for those that don't have an understanding of what the program is about. Oludandi, that's the title, Oludandi. Praise God. Um, I'd like to invite Pastor Shola to do the honor of uh, inviting our speaker. Can we cheer? Let's do it better. Feeling really happy to be in God's house this morning. Shout a loud hallelujah. Are you sure you're really happy to be here this morning? A loud hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we announced last week, uh, we have a special guest in our midst. As you know that we're discussing uh, in a series this month, the hand of God. So there's someone that the hand of God came upon her mightily. Remember what happened to Elijah and Ahab? So, so someone that in our midst this month that received the same hand of God. And she did what was exceptional, was amazing, and has entered the Guinness Book of Record. Shout hallelujah. And interestingly, our church is the first church she's visiting. So we have a very rare, since she got back from the UK last week Sunday, uh, with the August reception by the University of Lagos, this is the first place, the first church she's attending since she got back. So we are really privileged to be an honor to have her in our midst this morning. All right, so without wasting much of our time, so we want to bring her to the stage uh, for interactive session. And also, we can also ask questions as well. So we, we take your questions too, as much as you can take um, during this session before she takes a leave. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, so we have a short... Um... Please go ahead. Our special guest this morning is a 28-year-old travel content creator. She's not just a globetrotter. She's a purposeful traveler and connector, venturing often in the less trodden parts of the world. With 80 countries across six continents stamped in her passports, she has made it a mission to demonstrate that traveling can be safe, easy, and doable, especially as a black solo female traveler. Her previous adventure include her driving from Lagos to Ghana by road in the year 2019, her solo drive across Namibia in the year 2022, also her solo drive from London to Lake Como, Italy in the year 2023. Our recent adventure is a solo drive from London to Lagos in 68 days. She departed from London on January 31st and arrived in Nigeria April the 7th through the Seme border. This is a testament to her resilience, courage, and tenacity. She was treated to a heroic welcome upon her arrival by the Lagos State Government. And on Monday, Governor Babajide Sonwolu presented her a branded car and named her a tourism ambassador of the state. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Palumi Nubi. Please, in the new church, we let's, with that ovation, let's welcome Palumi Nubi. God bless you. Let's do it well, do it well, do it well, let's do it well. God bless you. And my sister Victoria. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I'm really excited. You know what they say, you know, when they say we come to the house of the Lord, my soul shall be joyful. I shall be in total delight. Um, before we get into anything, you know, we got to worship. We got to give honor to who honor is due, which is God. There is no trip. There is no London to Lagos. There is no Pelumi. There is no one without God. So if you'll be upstanding while we just sing a worship song to the living God, because there is... 
is worthy of our praise. To worship Him is why I live. To worship Him is why I'm here today. To worship Him is all I want to do for every moment of my life. To worship Him I live. To worship Him I live. I live to worship Him. To worship Him I live. To worship Him I live. I live to worship Him. What do you got call what do you got what do you call God in your secret place? Do you call him Father? Do you call him Yahweh? Do you call him my helper? Because there is no God, there is no Pelumi, there is nothing without him. because you're not just an amazing, please sit, you're not just an amazing person, you're not just a blogger, you're not just a travel content creator, you also can sing, oh, why? Yeah. Only you. <laughs> you church, can we celebrate her once again? I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say we're super delighted to have you this morning, fellowship with us. Thank you for coming Thank and for it's inspiring me. to know that um, Kelumi is not just someone who is um, crazy for attention, for recognition, but she's someone who knows God. And we can easily tell that God is the one who's been ordering your step and lighting your path. We're delighted to have you. Thank you for Thank coming you. and encouraging Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you. We love it. Okay, so as a church, those of us that have not sent questions yet, if you have a question, please don't ask her questions that she's been answering since. So important questions, questions that you think she can help you to clarify, um, help you to simplify. Please write it down. Pass the ushers close to you. Quickly. Thank you. God bless you. 
Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I saw you on Friday, yes. and I was just looking, and you know, I was paying attention. There's a lot of paparazzi going on around you, but you have this very down to earth energy around you, and I love it. I love it. I love it. Welcome once again. Thank you. This is the headquarters of your church, the place of his greater glory where destinies are not sure to blossom. So we're happy, we're excited to see a destiny blossoming already. And you are here with us. So we are sure that God is going to also use this to propel Amen. destinies in the house to, not, to, you know, to be blossomed. So I'm waiting and expecting that we're going to start hearing news of amazing things that people are doing. I'm sure Pauline will be excited to hear that they are from here and she was here yes. today. Yes or no? Yes. yes, we are looking forward to it. Thank you for coming. We have a few questions here, and we'll be running through them very quickly. The first one is, I'm sure something a lot of people have asked you since you came back, because this is not your first journey. No, not at all. Yes, there's been one to um, Namibia. To Namibia, there's one London. to Ghana, there's one to Komu, yes, and Komu. all of that. So this particular one is the longest mm -hmm. you've undergone so far. Mm -hmm. What exactly inspired you? To That's want a good to question. do something this daring. <laughs> That's a good question. So I've traveled to 80 plus countries. I think 86 last time I counted. So I love to travel. I love exploring the world. You know, I take the biblical term, you know, wherever my foot step upon is mine. So I've never been one to be like, oh, am I allowed to go here? The Bible said I can go there. Why am I scared? So definitely having that audaciousness is definitely rooted in Christ. I think, you know, it's so, so important also to pursue what, you know, constantly. There's a reason why you have the desires you have, you know. Um, there's a reason why it has been planted in your heart to do something or to go forth and do something. So I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. You know, I spent my early childhood here and then relocated to London. And each time I was traveling back, you know, the six hours flight and I'm back home. But I was trying to connect, you know, these other West African countries. Um, like you mentioned, I've done previous travels too as well. Um, and I really enjoy road trips. I love the fact you can just pack your car and stop somewhere or do something. So I really love that. Um, but the, honestly, the thing that made me say, let's do it, I think Mr. Conley, you might have heard about him, he did it by bike in 2022. And I was like, hey, has any woman done this? And I said, there's no woman. Ah, no, 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 no. When 2024, they can't be first of women anymore. Like, we need to, we need to be, you know, doing more audacious stuff. So it really was that prompting. Um, and I just wanted to do something grand. You know, I think it gets to a point in your life whereby you're just like, what is that big thing that I want to do? And stop playing small. So yeah, it's really to inspire the next generation that the travel is like a model, but maybe it's a business. Like, I would say, look, if you look at Kwalumi, if you ever heard ah, Kwalumi Nubi is traveling from London to Lagos, and you said, oh, it's not possible. And now you're seeing me right here in Lagos. Maybe you can then go back to the drawing board and say, oh, what is that business idea that I wanted to start and I thought it was impossible? What's that degree I wanted to get and I thought it was impossible? And really to get that out there, that whatever you want to do, you can do it with God's backing. Wonderful. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. And I'm sure that while you were on this journey, there were a lot of challenges. So Absolutely. tell us a few of them and how you were able to overcome them. So the trips like these, they're called expedition, you know, they're normally planned, like a group of people tend to go. And in those groups, you have like the medical person, the chef, the logistic person, the person in charge of whatever, you know. I had to wear multiple hats. I was doing this solo. A lot of people don't believe, like, I really did this solo. Even I was at a checkpoint and the guy, the guy had to come out of the car and he kept searching. I was like, who are you looking for? It's like the other person. I was like, there's no other person. So, you know, having that, you know, having to juggle multiple things, sharing and updating people, because I knew the impact of social media. You know, we're living in the digital age as well. So use, making sure that I'm uploading and keeping people updated and, keep, you know, having the attention to keep coming back, that was definitely a challenge. Um, border was a challenge. I talk about it, our African border, West Africa especially. That was definitely quite difficult crossing. Um, just missing home, you know, loneliness is a thing when you're doing this by yourself. When people don't talk about it much. Um, and obviously the car accident that happened, that was challenging because it was in a foreign place. I didn't speak the language. I wasn't really sure how to navigate that um, difficulty. But, you know, we are here right now. You know, it's, it's amazing to watch you just talk about these things in simple English words. And they look really easy, but... <laughs> 
I'm sure when they were happening, it wasn't fun at all. It wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That's fine. The next question we're going to ask is, we've said a lot about um, determination, mm. confidence, daring, what all of these amazing um, qualities. Was there a God factor? Was there a God factor? Was there a God factor? And <laughs> there was how only a God factor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my name is Oluwakwe Luminubi, full name. And I really believe that names are so powerful. When people say, am I doing this soul? I'm like, no, there's God here. He's right next to me. He's inside of me. So definitely there was a God factor. Like there was, this trip is impossible without God. That was the factor. That was what made it possible. So definitely, you know, faith, my faith was increased. My faith was tested. It was pushed to the limit where I'm like, ah, God, you don't send me to do this thing. Why is it so difficult? So, you know, it didn't say that it would be easy, but it said it would be there with you through the challenges. So definitely holding on to the world, definitely holding on to him. When people say, who sent you? I said, God did, you know. Having that confidence that I'm not doing this by my own power. Because we're humans, we have limitation, but having that, you know, ex extra pushing, extra backing, that's one of my playlists. I get backing, you know, one of my favorite songs. So definitely having that is, is so important. Mm, wonderful. Amazing. Share we've heard now. It's not when you are looking and you are, you know, imagining things in your head. There must be something. It must align with what God has placed in you. And he must be the one pushing you and supporting. If not... You're back in, I don't know. It is well. Wonderful. Um, to follow through that question, you know, there are lots of times when, generally, when it comes to the situation of a woman doing great things, there's always this belief that mm. it's extra difficult just because you're mm. a woman. So was there any point through your journey where your gender sort of created a special kind of stress? Mm-hmm. Through the journey. As women, we know we have our <laughs> monthly stuff now. That was extra complicated, you know. Um, when you're on your period and you want to just be lying in your bed and you're driving for 10 hours, it's definitely not comfortable. It's yeah. definitely not, you know, the most ideal. So definitely there was the gender thing. There's the safety bit as well. You know, just that extra vulnerability that people, the society put upon you. Like, oh, are you meant to be here? Are, does, do you, are you meant to take up this amount of space? And all of that. So there was, I didn't see it as a limitation. If anything, I thought it as a strength. Because it's like, yeah, because it's like, you know, I can do it. If, if, if a man can do it, I can do it too. So I think having that mindset. But there was definitely the biological, you know, challenges. There's the society expectation challenges. Um, and, you know, just dealing with that and navigating that space. So you guys heard it. Being a woman, yes, it's going to be a little, a tad bit more stressful, but be prepared for it. It shouldn't hold you back. And I'm sure that we'll celebrate you too like this very soon. I'm sure we'll celebrate you too like this very soon. Amen. Okay, we are following. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> For me, this question particularly is very interesting. Because a lot of times we're concerned about the goal we want to achieve. And then we achieve it and it's like, oh, all is good and well now in this land. But for you, how has this experience shaped you now? You thought of this, this particular expedition. You went through with it. You came out beautifully victorious. How has it shaped you now? How has it made you a different Belumi now? What's That's different about you now? <laughs> travel changes you in so many ways, you know. It pushes you out of your comfort zone, especially solo travel, because you have to self-reliance and self-resilience. That's probably the word. And there's a word that's so called grit, whereby, you know, despite the challenge, despite how many times you're knocked down, you get up the seventh time. There were so many times in this trip, I'm like, ah, if I end it here, it won't be so bad. Like, it's, it's not going to be the end of the world. But it's not because of, you know, it was just because of the back-to-back -back knockdown. It got to a point where you're just feeling very, very defeated. But that's where, again, you come back to your fate. And it's like, what is it I'm holding on to? Who sent me on this mission? So that's definitely a change of kind of like perspective as well. In terms of once you go through the journey, you're not just going through the motion. Each day you're learning more about yourself. You're learning more on how to be greater, how to be better, how to do better things. I think, like you said, this is just the beginning for me. There's a lot of leadership role that has been put on me right now, you know, from the Lagos government being the brand ambassador. Um, there's definitely just a lot, of a lot of things that will cause me to grow some more. I'm very much about women empowerment too as well. I think we can drive. 
not just cars, but we can drive entrepreneurship, we can drive innovation, we can drive homes, we can drive businesses. So really pushing that message about the she girl, like we have the power, like we are created by God. Like that's, there's a destiny, there's a power that's in us that we can do great things. So definitely excited about that. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yes, having said all of this, what, if I'm not asking you a question now, the opportunity you have now, you, you have the world looking at you, whether or not you can see them physically or not, what would you say to somebody randomly who just, just wants to hear something to uplift them? What, what would be your message now because you have the podium? The magic is in the doing. If, if you've heard me, you probably heard that a lot of times. The magic is in the doing. <laughs> you know, you need to shift away i'm big on planning this trip took a year plus of planning so it wasn't a spontaneous let's just carry my car and just be going i did detailed planning but at a point you need to set a deadline i need to be like i am going to put that thing online click that publish button send that email i always tell people look you need to send some emails you close your laptop and you run because you're like which kind of audacity have i just shown right now you need to take action. Like, it's, it, that's where you see the results. You feel the fear. Sometimes I do stuff and there are butterflies in my belly. Sitting here right now, there are butterflies in my belly. You know, they are, but you need to put that step one after the other. You need to move away from just overthinking. I remember when I crossed into Morocco, and because of there were so many information, oh, you need your passport, you need your car document, you need your insurance. Someone even said, oh, you need the receipt of the car. I bought the car five wow. years ago, which receipt? So I had so much overthinking. And when I did it, I crossed the, to the other side. It was so easy, five minutes. And I was like, wow, what That's other true. thing as, exactly, <laughs> what other stress of overthinking? Overthinking is just a stressful thing. It doesn't lead you anywhere. So really, you know, do that thing. That you've been putting up for a very very long time now is the time like just go forth and do it's so important wonderful thank you so much for that i have a very funny question here but i know you have that very amazing sense of humor so of you course. you take it <laughs> the person says hello palumi how Hi. are you able to travel from spain to morocco yes since you rode a car okay you can't possibly drive over the mediterranean sea yes. question mark <laughs> That's a good question. And that's what this trip was about, to educate people of different kind of like, you know, means of transportation. So, in, you know, there are two, I know you look at the body of water, and that's why, you know, cause Doubting Thomas were like, ah, uh ah, -uh, which kind of lie is this one presenting to us? Um, but actually there are two ways, in, in, from the UK to Spain, you can either take the tunnel, you know, you put the car on a train, it goes on the ground, or you can also put the car in a ferry. The ferry rides are one hour, 30 minutes. You do the same thing in Spain to Morocco, you put it on the, you drive into the ferry, you can leave the car and then, you know, eat something, then come back when the ferry gets to the other side, then you drive out with your car. So that's how I was able to cross. It's literally impossible to do it any other way, except I build like a bridge, which is not possible right now. So yeah, of all the trip of the many, many hours of driving, it was an hour, 30 minutes on each side using the ferry. Thank you for that clarification. No so problem. Doubting it Thomas, was a pleasure. Now we know. <laughs> <laughs> the next question here says, have you ever thought of recruiting young travelers who have the same passion as you do? Recruiting, not really. Um, but definitely, you know, if there was a kind of skill set that you're trying to, you know, develop more, you can, you know, shoot me an email. Hello at beluminubi.com. I'm always happy to answer any questions and help, you know, in kind of mentorship or any guidance that I can provide, more than happy to do that. Wonderful, thank you so much for that. The next question here says, do you consider traveling around the world your purpose? If yes, when and how did you discover it? I think travel is a tool. Um, it allows me to number one, story tell of God's creation, the beautiful places that God has created. So that's always a honor and a pleasure. I think what I use travel now is more of, you know, expedition, showing people what is possible or not. Um, the joy of starting something and ending something, you know, to inspire people to do what they, their own calling is. Um, I'll say that, you know, with callings, they come with time and it's really fine tuning over time as well. 
Um, I'm a big believer of, and this could not be everyone, please, whatever I take, take with a pinch of salt. Um, I'm a big believer of chapters. You know, I have a PhD degree. I've done being a scientist. I've been a, you know, a sales consultant. I've been a coach. I've been a social media person. So there's just a lot of chapters I've gone through. I've, now I'm a traveler, an ambassador. So I feel like life, God has given us these many, many talents. And you shouldn't limit it or box it up that you just got to be this thing and you got to be that thing. But as long as there's God leading you in every area, just keep going with his purpose. Keep fine-tuning and you'll continue to direct your path. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question here says, this is another question where you really need to laugh. I will laugh. At <laughs> the person says, please, what is your real age? And how did you achieve this much at this early age of yours? I love it. When they introduce me, they say I'm 28. I'm like, ah, they just remove one year from my age. So I'm 29. My birthday is December 31st, okay. 1994. Um, I'm 29 years old. Um, it's honestly God. It's honestly God. I, I, of me, I'm like, ah, there's still so much to be done. I still have big, 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 big. And I feel like if your dreams don't scare you, you're not doing enough. You know, and more importantly, if it's only self-centered, you're definitely getting it wrong. You should be impacting people. We should be thinking about legacy. After I'm gone, what will people say? What will people think about me? What will people, you know, what am I leaving behind? I think that's kind of where I kind of lean towards. But it's all God. All glory to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. So I think the last question we'll take before I allow you, you know, give your last words and okay. say anything you like to say. Somebody here says, what gave you the idea of doing what you did? Like, did you just wake up one morning and tell yourself, I want to drive through countries? Basically, yeah. You know, <laughs> I think I told someone and they said, I can't do it. And they're like, you shouldn't have said that because now I have to do it. Um, no, it was just honestly chasing adventure, you know, going for something that I've always wanted to do in terms of, you know, showing. I, I, I'm really a big believer of representation matter. Sometimes people need to see themselves in certain spaces. Some ideas you can't even phantom because you've never even seen someone that looks like you doing something like that. So, you know, I'm a big believer that if there is something, you know, be the change you want to see. Have you, have you heard that quote before? So if there's something you feel, ah, there should be a female president. You should be female president. You know, so I think there's, there's that just joy of going after audacious things and taking up space because that's so, so important. Wonderful. Thank you I very much. I can take much. more if there's any more. Okay. Um, let me give you this then. Someone says, how were you able to maintain your health mm. and sanity during the journey? The desert, the cold, the changing, mm. everything. How were you able to maintain your health, health is wealth. and sanity? Health is wealth, you know. Prioritizing oneself. Self-care, you know. Taking a break when you need it. Take social media break. You know, there's that thing, like, if you feel like your mom functioning a bit, it's just like technology. When your phone is acting up, they say, turn it off, turn it back on again. So sometimes we've got to do that with life. Just kind of hit the reset button, take some time off, rest. It's very important. Um, but also knowing that this is not by power, not by might, but by the special grace of God. So having that joy, you know, I love a good praise time, you know, just worshiping because it's just that extra feeling. You cannot pour out of an empty vessel. So just refilling yourself, refilling your, your, your bandwidth, you know. Um, but yeah, in terms of like medical, like I prepare for, the, prepare for the worst and pray for the best. You know, I packed everything that I could, you know, first aid kits, medical stuff. You know, there was an eye problem when I was in Morocco. I looked for specialists. This is why God created these people. Do not you know, say you're not seeking medical attention. Um, that is why they are there. Seek that if that is need, needed. Um, when I had the car accident, there was, you know, I was in the hospital, I seeked, you know, medical. So definitely just having that um, abundance mindset that God is with us and is giving us all this provision too as well. Thank you so much. Thank Wonderful. you. Okay. I'm going to ask you this because you say you want to take more questions. Yeah, yeah. So someone says, what country passports did you travel with? <laughs> Nigerian or UK? Both. I think that's the A part. Okay. They said if Nigerian... What were the challenges you faced using the passport? Okay, so I use both, both passports. Um, I have passport privilege. Everybody has privileges. You, people don't talk about it much, and I do speak about it quite a few times. This journey was definitely 
made easier because of that. So I used my British passport from the UK all the way to the Gambia, which made it visa free. Um, so I didn't have to apply for a visa or anything like that. I made the transition quite smooth. And when I got to um, the Gambia, I switched to my Nigerian passports because the echo was kicked in. So then it was visa free from Gambia to the UK, to, 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 to Lagos, Nigeria. So definitely making use of the privileges that you have. Um, in terms of the Nigerian passports, I always tell people, if you want to travel and travel is your thing, start building your travel record. You know, there are some visa-free countries that you can visit with your Nigerian passports. At least I went through at least six of them or five of them. Um, just build those records because it shows that you're a responsible traveler. It shows that when you do go somewhere, you will come back to your hometown or home city. And these words are the concern of the immigration people. So if you're able to show that responsibility, that you're a responsible traveler, there's a higher chance to then when you apply for other visas to have a higher um, chance of receiving it. It was tough. The border crossing is tough. I'm hoping to, you know, speak to policy changes in terms of how can we do better in terms of our policy and our co control of our borders is definitely a lot more difficult than, you know, when I was in Europe, just crossing our borders. There's definitely a lot more restriction, more bureaucracy, more corruption, sadly. Um, and the change is needed desperately and is needed now. Amazing. Thank you so much. This has been really enlightening. Thank you so much for sharing and sharing honestly. Yeah. We appreciate it. Just because, that's why I'm reading this question, because I feel like you've answered this particular question along the lines. It says, obviously, there were troubles and setbacks during the journey. How were you able to keep up? And what were your thoughts that kept you true? It was all God, honestly. It got to a point whereby you're, you, yourself finished. Like, I don't know how to explain. Like, you've, your own power, your own might is finished. Um, there were two things. There were three things, you know. My family, close friends, people that, you know, championed and cheered me on. My e-family, the people that joined the journey. That was super important too as well. People were checking on me, sending me prayers. Your prayers were never wasted. If you prayed for me, your prayer was absolutely not wasted. It was needed at every single point of the journey. There was the people that, you know, parents send me videos of their young girls, you know, eight, ten years old. Like, my daughter just asked, where's Kweliminubi in the world today? I couldn't disappoint those people. In the tough times, I remember of those young girls that I was trying to inspire. You know, that was super, super important. You know, and realizing that this is bigger than me. And that's why I talked about earlier on about setting goals that are bigger than you. It was just Kweliminubi traveling. After the accident happened in Ivory Coast, I will just say, it's okay. We can just, you know, tow the car. And I'll just take a flight. London to Ivory Coast too is good. But then knowing that there's a bigger purpose in terms of showing that this thing is, imp the impossible can be made possible with the backing of God. So definitely having that ultimate vision, ultimate goal just drives you forward when other people are like, I should have quit by now. So yeah, there was definitely a lot of factors that just kept me going and will continue to keep me going. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Definitely. Amen. Um, so at this point, I think I'm just going to allow you to say your last words, okay. um, whatever it is that your message is now that you want, to, you've not mentioned already, anything it is you want to give to us just before we allow you move to other things this morning. Absolutely. I think I just want to leave you with Proverbs 3, 5, which says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. There is joy in trusting in God. Life will push you and challenges would come. But surrendering to God's plan is purpose. Another Bible verse that I really loved as well is um, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future when you hold on to god's promise when you know that his plans are good even in the bad they are good it really shifts the perspective because life is about where you look the framing in which you look at things and when we look at things in god's framing when we know that his trust is good his faithfulness is forever his love is abundant. It's not an exchange. It's not like, ah, I worship God today, so he will do me good. Uh-uh. 
is he has already done us good he has already sent us jesus christ his abundance love is already sufficient for us so holding on to that faith in him holding on to his love holding on to his grace that will take you far more than anybody can ever do continue to love him continue to show him you know lift him up and he will exalt you as well Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, a standing ovation Thank for you. the tenacious, the courageous, the beautiful, the daring, the amazing Kwelu Minubi. Thank you so much for coming. We had such a wonderful time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope to continually hear amazing things about you in the future. We are rooting for you, that I can tell you. I know I'm speaking on behalf of everyone. We love you. And the fact that you carry the banner of Christ, I will appreciate it. We love to say it. It's delicious. Thank you for your amazing personality. And thank you to Mommy, too. She's here this morning. Appreciate our mom. Mommy, you are amazing. You are fantastic. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Mama. You did a wonderful job with this one. We can see. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mommy. Let's appreciate her again, the entire church. Let's celebrate Palumi. Praise the name of the Lord. I know we have been so blessed with everything she said this morning, yes or no. And we look forward to further engagement with you. Uh, we've received so many questions. I know she, she has so many other stuff to do today as well, so we can't keep her here for too long but i want her to mention a particular is there email address that they can reach you on name of jesus let's ask the god to protect her and preserve her that shall always be a joy to our generation and she shall fulfill her destiny thank you father for in jesus name we pray as a church we bless this morning in the name of god the father the son and holy ghost the hand of almighty god is mighty upon you you shall come to swear to greater heights in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Mommy, please come over, please. One moment, someone sit on. Let's appreciate mother. God bless you, mommy. I can imagine. I mean, I want to ask her. I mean, what, what kind of trauma she will have faced in 68 days? <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Sincerely, um, there was no fear. I will not lie to you. It's the first day we spoke. We are in the we are in Dubai. Uh, we live in Dubai now. Part UK, part Dubai. Um, and we just went for naming ceremony of my second grandson, first grand, first grandson. So, um, he just said, Mom, I'll be going from London to UK by driving. I said, you must be joking. I said, don't start it. He said, Mommy, don't start it again, no. That's why I don't always tell me my plan. I always tell you last minute, last minute, last minute. I planned for more than one year, and now you are saying no. I said, I didn't say no, but is it logic? Then, sincerely, at that seat, we just ended like that. And me and the daddy, we agree. We start praying. So, it really set out. Every day in the morning and the night, we pray. And we just ask her, where are you? So we know the location, wherever he is. Whatever is happening, we are aware. So there was no fear. So when the accident happened, sincerely I will tell you, brethren, I want to do it as a testimony in the big church, but I will testify to you. On Wednesday when that accident happened, my husband was in Gambia. And I did not go to church. I said, let me go to MFM just at the door. We are MFM in London. MFM Croydon. <laughs> because there was no Baptist in London. Our church is not in London. So we found ourselves in MFM. And we've been there for more than 19 years. <laughs> Seeing our worship is not something strange. It's in, in London, everybody is not a worshiper. We can have a choir. But four people will be a worshiper in the front. It's one of them in London. So um, as I was going on Wednesday, I said, let me go to church. Let me go to MFM and pray. I don't miss prayer. I love prayer. Prayer is my food. Brother, what did I say? Prayer is my food. Even my husband, when he comes in, ah, you are still in this prayer. I say, now, wow, I did you. You thank God for technology. 
it strengthens when you want to pray. So I went to MFM, I was praying, and it was the second sign this house we should bring. So from our house, the second sign. So Baba gave us, we started doing our prayer. And as I was praying, I don't know, this woman was facing somewhere and was like, this, and he faced me from another line looking at my prayer. And I said, excuse me, and I begin to blow everything I need to blow that day. <laughs> And I pray, and I pray, and I pray. And if you don't pray, if you don't pray, Satan will make sense of you. Hallelujah. So I went back home, and I called her. And said, oh, mommy, I'm driving, I'm driving. I said, excuse me, we've agreed not to drive in the night. I say, I need to drive because I need to catch up. Okay, I'll speak to you later. And I dropped the phone. And I put on my prayer again, I was praying. And she called me. Say, Mommy, don't be afraid, though. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Are they afraid? No, I'm not afraid. I can hear you talking. What happened? I have an accident. You know that kind of accident you have that your car disappears? I say, eh, eh, if I'm secure, you too will be secure. And I can even hear your voice. So I was not afraid. When we saw the car, we said, God, it can only be you. And the Almighty God fixed the car. And the car came here until it gets to Yaba College of Tech. And we're doing, eh, 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 eh. I said, no, you go to get to destination. We lay on, and the car start moving again, and it got to destination. Pray the Lord. May his name be praised forever in Jesus' name. God bless you, mommy. All right. Uh, as a church, we have a token. I want to present to Palumi. Uh, we love you. Uh, and we're so much happy that you've been a great inspiration to young people. So we want to present this um, special recognition award to you on behalf of our father in the Lord, Dr. D.K. Ulukoya, and our precious mother in the Lord, Dr. Pastor Mrs. Shadi Ulukoya, and the pastor in charge of the youth church, Pastor Ola Demiji Emmanuel. We present this special award to you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. A box. Let me have the box, please. Um, very quickly. Oh, well, that's something I want you to give. It. Yeah, okay. All right, and mommy as well. Um, okay. Well, mommy, please come over, please. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah. Also, on behalf of our father-in-law, Dr. Dick Lukoya. And our precious mother, Pastor Doctor Mrs. Shadi Lukoya, and our pastor in charge of this youth church, Pastor Emmanuel Dimeji, please to youth as well. God bless you. All right, God bless you, mommy. God bless you, my dear. Can we make that clapping more louder? Thank you for coming. Can we have logistics? Logistics, Pastor ID. Okay. All right, please, can we bring out our tithes and our offering as we give unto God? If you have your tithes and offering, can you lift it up as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
We give you all the glory, all the honor, adoration. We thank you for every one of us that is able to give, those doing transfer, those giving cash. We ask, Lord, that you replenish our purses in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that we, together we come against every spirit of lack in this house. We bind and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that everyone in this place will become more prosperous and more prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's just take some announcements. Uh, we announced earlier that next two weeks, we're having a drama Sunday, and we mentioned that the venue will be where? Main auditorium. So please invite your friends. Uh, it promises to be a very beautiful service in the presence of God. Drama Sunday, starting by 7.30. So don't come to this venue. Just move directly to Main Odd. Main Odd. Um, driving school starts on the 15th of April, 2024. Tomorrow, driving school fees is 10,000 naira, which includes learner's permit. So it's possible that once you finish the driving um, school, you get a learner's permit. And the deadline for payment is, tr is tomorrow. If you are interested, kindly come forward immediately. After service, we'll have our uh, officials waiting for you to register. Driving school starts tomorrow and the registration fee is 10,000 naira. Praise God. Choir, are we ready? All right, with well, the God bless you applause, can we welcome the best choir in the world? Hallelujah. Clap for yourself, please. So, the choir is here this morning to minister to you in song. And like the theme of the month says, the hand of God. We are here to tell you how wonderful this hand has been. And the lyric says, he holds our lives in his hand. And we are not afraid of what the future holds, what's going to happen tomorrow, because we know our life is safe and secure in his hand. So ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the Youth Church Choir. Thank you. All right. If you believe that God has your life in his hands, can you shout Jesus? Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus! Glory! Hallelujah!
to accomplish what concerns me today. And he said, To handle everything that comes my way, He's able more than able to do much more.
you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I want to sincerely appreciate our general overseer, Professor D.K. Olukoya, and our dad in the Lord here, uh, Pastor Emmanuel Adimeji, and the entire pastorate for giving us this platform to come in your presence to speak on the word of God. The hand of God. Can we rise up as we go to the Lord and pray? You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. Again and again and again. You are Makapo Zatayaba. You are Rika Poshoto Zata. your word transform the life of your people. Let your word take us from another level to another level and to another level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Father. Raise up your hand to the heavenly as we, as we go as we take these prayers. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Father. So let the mighty hand of God restore Whatever the enemy has stolen from me, in the name of Jesus, say so let the mighty hand of God restore. Restore back whatever the enemy has stolen from me, in the name of Jesus. Let the mighty hand of God restore, restore, restore. Whatever it is that the enemy has collected from you. Oh yeah, pray, 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 pray. Makalia bro zitayabash. We are speaking on the hand of the almighty God. Let that hand of God now restore. Restore whatever it is the enemy has collected from you. Aha. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, O oh, hand of God, destroy the agenda of the enemy against my life. In the name of Jesus. O oh, hand of God, destroy the agenda of the enemy against my life. In the name of Jesus. O oh, hand of God, destroy the agenda of the enemy against my life. Oh yeah, pray, 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 pray. It is going to happen. Whether you believe it or not. 
It is going to happen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, O oh, hand of God, anoint me for greatness. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Aha. You have just seen a lady that the hand of God has anointed for greatness. And that hand of God is coming upon you too. Pray it now. Say, O oh, hand of God, anoint me for greatness. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Have your seat. God bless you. Let's open our Bible quickly to the book of Jeremiah 32, verse 17. Jeremiah 32, verse 17. God bless you as you uh, focus on this uh, message. The Lord will open your eyes for certain things and make you great in Jesus' name. Verse 17, Jeremiah 32, verse 17. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee, and there is nothing too hard for thee. So, from the beginning of creation, God has stretched out his hand, his hand, and then created the heavens and the earth. Of course, that is a literal meaning. Of course, um, that is just a direct translation of it. But when we say the hand of God, it, is actually, we symbol, it actually symbolizes the presence of God in your life. It symbolizes the action of God in your life. What is it, that thing that God can do? If you open your Bible to Isaiah 43, verse 19, the Bible says, Behold, I will do a new thing. And it says, Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? And it says, I will even make a way. That is what God can do. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So that is what the hand of God can do. I am praying for somebody right here. The hand of God will make a way for you where there is no way. I cannot hear you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So what happened to you when the hand of God comes upon you? What happened to somebody when the, word, when the hand of God comes upon you? Number one, you will experience favor and blessing from God. That is success and prosperity will overflow your ways. Number two, there will be strength and empowerment to overcome challenges. Jehu was empowered to destroy Jezebel. What is it in your life that um, you've been trying to do and then you cannot do it? But eventually, your family have not done something great before. Or what is it that you know, you imagine, I mean, you see other people doing it and you want to do it, but yet you can't do it. And then when the hand of God comes upon you, you will be empowered to carry out that thing, to do it, to fulfill it. And so shall it be unto you in Jesus' name. You will see that in Isaiah 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. You can put that down. There will be healing when the hand of God comes upon you. There will be healing. And then this healing will be both physical and spiritual. If you look at the, the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 25 and to 34, uh, you notice the woman with the issue of blood. When the hand of God came upon her, the blood, was, the blood disappeared totally. Do we talk about the impotent man at the pool of Bethesda? If you look at that in the book of John chapter 5, if you read uh, from verse 1 to... Uh, verse 9, you will see where uh, the hand of God came upon this man and then he became whole. When the hand of God comes upon somebody, you will have divine guidance and divine direction. Divine guidance and divine direction. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. The Bible says, Thus said the Lord, 
thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which teacheth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. The Lord mighty will give you guidance and will give you direction, the way you should go. Thank you, Father. When the hand of God comes upon you, there will be deliverance. Deliverance. Total deliverance. Unquestionable deliverance. Obadiah 17. You'll see that in Obadiah 17. There will be protection and security. Of course, the whole Psalm 91 tells us that. You can also see that in um, Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. The hand of the Lord, when it comes upon you, it will equip you. Equip you for his work and for ministry. When the hand of God comes upon you, there will be conviction and conversion. It is actually the hand of God that comes on, upon people that make people repent from their sin, give, that give their life totally to Christ. As so many of us that we are still here, the hand of God will come upon you today. And there will be total conviction. In the name of Jesus Christ. This simply means that there will be repentance. It means you will drop those things that you used to do. You will then do them no more. It simply means that those things that you are doing in the secret, you will do them no more. The hand of God cannot come upon you really and then you still continue in sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So today you open your heart unto God and allow God to come upon you such that you will stop those things that you used to do. When the hand of God come upon you, your faith shall be renewed by the leading, of, by the leading to spiritual growth. Also, there will be miraculous intervention by God. A sudden opportunity will just come up. Something magnificent, something great will just happen in your life that you will be recognized even globally. That is the hand of God coming upon you. Of course, when the hand of God comes upon you, and that is where you hear people talk about the gift of the spirit, the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, the gift of teaching, and so many others. See, them in, see that in First Corinthians chapter 12. You will be anointed for leadership when the hand of God comes upon you. As I mentioned earlier on, when the hand of God comes upon you, of course, you will have global recognition. Just as Belomi, you saw her now. It is actually the hand of God. When the hand of God comes upon somebody, nobody can cover you. Nobody can hide you. Where? Who wants to hide you when the hand of God has come upon you? You'll be recognized globally, worldwide. And that's why I'm going to go back a little bit again to where I said there will be conviction and conversion. Because if you still live in that sinful life, it might be difficult. How do we move the hand of God? Now, we, as human beings, we want to imagine that the hand of God is a hand, actually. And then we want to, of course, it's not the hand of God because he, the God, God himself is what? Fire. Consuming fire. Of course, we, but we as a human being want to imagine, literally, that the hand of God, okay, can be moved. So, how do you move the hand of God, okay? We have to obey the word of God. Just like we said, obey the word of God. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 2. Romans 3, 20, Romans 3 23. That is telling us to stop committing sin. Like I mentioned. So that is how one way you can move the hand of God. Romans 3, 23. For all have seen that 
falls short of the glory of God. This verse is actually acknowledging that everyone has sinned, but we, don't, we shouldn't just remain in that sin. We shouldn't remain there, but we should come out. Come out from it. When the hand of God comes upon you, of course, there is where you see great men of God humbling themselves that with humility. You see that in First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humility. You humble yourself. I mean, that's how to move the hand of God. How to move the hand of God again is you engage yourself in what? Worship. Great worship. Worship from your heart. Worshiping God from the bottom of your heart. Deuteronomy 6, 5. You will see that. You also see that in Psalm 95, verse 1 to 2. How do you move the mighty hand of God? You can imagine that mighty hand. That hand, if we actually touch it ordinarily, somebody can burn to fire, can burn to ashes, I mean. But then how do you move that mighty hand of God when you indulge yourself in fervent prayer? Fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. Fervent prayer. James chapter 5, verse 16. Luke 22, 44. And the last one I'm going to talk here, and I'm going to dwell on it a little bit, is how do you move the mighty hand of God? And this is the greatest one, sacrifice. Sacrifice. For everything you see in this world is sacrifice. For God so loved this world, he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. That's the greatest sacrifice. 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 I say it again, sacrifice. When I first gave my life to Christ, I saw something like a revelation on something like, um, like this kind of square. And by the corner, I saw big with capital letter, sacrifice. It took me so many years to understand what it is, sacrifice. The book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let's read this one. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable services. Which is your reasonable service. This means this is your true worship. The true and the proper worship. It applies to our entire being. We are called to dedicate ourselves completely to God. We are called to dedicate ourselves completely to God. How do you spend your time? Do you spend your time in the things of this world? Or you spend your time as a sacrifice, dedicating yourself to God in prayer? Do you spend your time as a sacrifice, dedicating yourself to God in, in Bible reading? Do you sacrifice your time, dedicating yourself to the King of Glory? In evangelizing and sharing tracts, in doing things for God? How, did you, how do you spend, I mean, your time, your resources, your energy? Where do you burn your energy on? On what? And this is the biggest question I'm going to put to every one of us here. God is not calling you to come and kill ram or burn any incense or actually, um, what is it? But God is calling you for your own self, for you to dedicate your own self to him. And that's the biggest way you can move the hand of God. For all we have mentioned so far here, sacrifice is one of the greatest if you want the hand of God to move greatly in your life, then you have to sacrifice something to God. It's actually, it is actually a spiritual law. It takes a double sacrifice to break a sacrifice. What does it mean? It means that when you have already spent so much time sacrificing Permit me to say, nonsense. And then for you to come back to, all, to, to the almighty God, it takes a double sacrifice 
to break that particular sacrifice. You have to spend time to do the things of God. You have to spend time to pray to God. You have to spend time to read the word of God. You also have to sacrifice the things of the world. You know, um, I mean, a friend calls you and say, come, let's go for this party. Let's go to this party. And then, then, then. You say, I sacrifice it for God. If we have um, much of the opportunity, we can speak largely on this particular sacrifice. But I tell you today that you giving your life totally to God, to Christ without going back, without looking back, and you focus totally, 100%. Even sometimes when it looks as if you are falling there, you are rising again. And then you are crying and struggling. I say, I don't want to go back to this thing. That is the biggest sacrifice God is talking about in that Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Why would the hand of God not move in your life? If I give you a little testimony, just... It was when I came to MFM that things began to happen. And then I moved from one level to another level, from one level to another level. Within five years, I moved from one level, a greater level, to another greater level, and to another greater level. But we'll have to talk that again next time. But if you are here today, and then you know yourself, that you are supposed to be bigger than whom you are. You are bigger than the person you are right now. And yet you are, this, you are still in this particular position, complaining, lamenting. Let us rise up, please. The hand of God will come upon you today. If you are still in that position, and then you know that you are supposed to have been greater than that. Let us rise up. I want you to raise up your hand to the heavenlies. Raise up your hand to the heavenlies. And you know, this is because of the of one or two things, I mean, the sin or, I mean, mistakes or something that you have indulged yourself or something I mean, beyond your power or something that you have found yourself that you don't even like to do it. Why don't you raise up your hand wherever you are and begin to ask for mercy from the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon me. I'm very, very sorry, Lord. Every area that I have sinned against you, any area that I have wronged you willingly and unwillingly, Lord, show me your mercy. Willingly and unwillingly, Lord, show me your mercy, Father. I am very sorry, Lord. I rededicate my life again unto you, my Father. Wash my sins away with your precious blood. Raise up your hand or you put your hand on the chest. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Porch me with your precious blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. And write my name, Lord, in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want every one of us to pray, pray this singular prayer point. Say, 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 O oh, hand of God, anoint me for greatness. In the name of Jesus, pray, 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 pray. Say, oh, hand of God, anoint me for greatness. In the name of Jesus, say, oh, hand of God, anoint me for greatness. Anoint me for greatness. Oh, hand of the Lord, anoint me for greatness. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Beloved, we are still in the mood of prayer. And I want you to take your life very, very serious. All we have today is to speak on the hand of, God, of the Lord. And I pray, as this hand of the Lord will be coming upon you, your life shall move forward in the name of Jesus. God is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to say God is able God is able to deliver those who trust in God is able God is able Say
We want to pray, pray three prayers before we move forward from here. But before we pray these three prayers, they are deliverance prayer. But before we pray it, you are going to sing this song in a military way. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? 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 I say nobody. I say nobody. I say nobody. I say no power. I say no power. I say nobody. I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? 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 I say nobody. 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 Close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I say nobody. Let the power of the living God begin to live in the midst. Everybody, fight for your destiny. I command them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them bow. 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 Aha. Aha, aha, power of the living God. Arise, arise, move, 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 move. That's it, that's it, that's it. Chains are being broken. Chains are being broken. It is the end of the Lord that we need. Reka Poshe Kata, Masenda Yeka Poga. Aha. Thank you, Jesus. I say nobody. I say nobody. Say powers fighting against my star. People at the back, I want you to say this loud and clear. Say powers fighting against my star. You are a liar. Die in the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Any power fighting against my star. Enough is enough. This money. See the hand of God. 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 Da 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 da. Oh yes. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. This is when I will know if you love yourself. Say, every enemy within me are to pull me down. I shake you out. Shake your body. Shake your body. Shake your body. Oh yes. Every enemy within. Laziness within. Sleep. Too much sleeping within. Forces within. I to pull me down. I shake you out. I shake you out. I shake you out. Holy Ghost. Aha. 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 They are going. They are going. They are going. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you once again. Because we know your mighty hand is power here. We have run to, not to man, but to, unto living God. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. As we step forward in the share of this your word and of the Lord, Father, overtake our life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Please have your seats. We have three prayers to pray. But the last prayer, we are going to pray it very, very soon after this uh, short charge. To the glory of God, we appreciate the name of the Lord in the life of our Father in the Lord and our Mother in the Lord. Dr. and Dr. Olukoya. And on our Father and the Lord on this mountain, Pastor Emmanuel Oladimeji, on whose wings we are able to fly. And uh, because of that, I am speaking to your life prophetically that every situation you've brought here today, your career, your finance, your marital, 
whether you are in debt, bad dream, sickness, whatsoever, they shall die here this morning in the name of Jesus. We forge ahead in explaining to us how mighty hand of God was. And this series was introduced by our Father and the Lord last week, where he taught us uh, a lot concerning candidates for deliverance. And I remember he told us specifically that for you to qualify as a candidate of deliverance, you need to desire a miracle, you need to expect a miracle, you need to labor for it. Then he was teaching us about candidates of miracles. And he mentioned that you need to work for it, you need to labor for it. And he said something. He said you need to constantly make demands for the hand of God. And that is exactly what we are going to do at the close of this meeting. And because of that, hand of God can be seen in the scriptures. Just like our, our pastor who was there earlier had been able to enumerate it to us. But I want to shift a little bit in another dimension for us to see that the hand of God cannot be limited in any way. In the scriptures, the hand of God was mentioned as finger of God. It was mentioned as arm of God. It was mentioned as the hand of the Lord. It was mentioned as hand of God, just like we have it. And we also call the hand of God the right hand of the Lord. For the finger of God, it was even the enemy of God that the first discovered that there is something called the finger of God. And that one can be found in the book of Exodus chapter 8, verse 19, where the enemies of God in the palace of Pharaoh were contending with the power of Almighty God. And when it got to a stage, when they cannot stand it, they have to withdraw and say, Sir, Mr. Pharaoh, King Pharaoh, this, the, le the level we have gone to is no more the hand of man. This can only be the finger of God. The finger that this people were referring to in this place is actually the hand of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And as we can see the hand of God, also it is expressly written in Exodus chapter 6 verse 6. And also, while it is being referred to as the hand of God, we can also see that in Exodus chapter 7 verse 5, Joshua chapter 4 verse 24, Why Ezra chapter 8 verse 18 was specifically saying the hand of God. And we can see in Luke chapter 22 verse 69, that Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. All these dimensions of hand, finger, ham, is referring to one thing, which is what? The hand of God. With this background, let me share with you quickly 10 truths that can be traced to the Bible concerning the hand of God. Number one, the hand of God is long, more than what you can ever imagine. And that is why I used to tell people, do never limit the limitless God. Can you say that to your friend? And that is why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 58, it said the hand of the Lord is not shortened, full stop, or comma. The hand of the Lord is not shortened. It's what you can never imagine. With uh, geographical research, we got to understand that the distance between the sun and the heart is close to 150 million kilometers. See how far the earth is to, to the sun. But I can tell you this morning, categorically, in God, that the hand of God is longer than that. And that is why, in any situation you are, wherever you have been boxed to, this hand of God is capable of doing, of doing what? Plucking you out of that situation. No matter how you've been battered in life, I speak to your life today. The almighty hand of God will locate you in the name of Jesus. Number two. No one can withstand the hand of God. No one can withstand the hand of God. For it carries power and might. The Bible told us this in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verses. It said the mighty hand of God is, is, is so revealing that no one can withstand it. So you as a Christian, you are under the protective hand of God. And no one can withstand you. That is why I say you are so lucky. To be a child of God. You are so privileged to be a Christian. Because of what? You are under the arm of God. And there is no power upon the surface of the earth. That can do what? That can withstand you. Because you are clothed in God. Number three point that I want to tell you today. Is that the hand of God can write. Praise the name of the Lord. It was the hand of God that wrote the laws that were given. The laws and instruction that were given to the children of Israelites. This one can be found in Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And it is the same hand of the Lord that wrote, wrote, wrote on the wall in the palace of King uh, Belzezer of Babylon, where he wrote, Mene, Mene, Teke, Ufasin. And you can see, if you follow that story, what that hand of God means. Because it was a mystery to them. And God assisted Daniel to decode it. So, the hand of God is present here this morning. And I decree into your life, every negative thing that the powers of your father's house had written concerning you is overruled by the hand of God in the name of Jesus. A new story is being written concerning you. A new chapter is being written concerning you. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Number four point, the hand of God can fall on a man for auction. I open to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 8. I will take only verse 1, but you can write down verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord fell upon me. And when you see true, that lifted Ezekiel up and took him to IRM. And that is why I put it to you today as a church. If you have been seeking the face of God to see vision, to, see, to, to be able to prophesy, to hear from God, or you need one spiritual action whatsoever, seek the hand of the Lord. The only prayer you need is what? Hand of the Lord, fall upon me. Hand of the Lord, fall upon me. After the order of Ezekiel. And that hand will appear and will take you from where you are. You don't need a prophet. You don't need a pastor. All you need is to balance things on your knees. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The hand of God can recover. Isaiah 11 verse 11 is talking about the ability of God to recover all the Israelites that have been scattered about to save several countries. Is there anything you've lost in the years before now? I decree today by the power in the name of Jesus that the hand of the Lord shall recover for you. You shall recover. You shall recover. You shall recover. In the name of Jesus. Is it your job? Is it your career? Is it your marriage? Whatsoever that you've lost, the hand of God will recover it for you. Number six one, the hand of God upon you makes provisions and command favor. All you need is the hand of God. And when this hand of God balance on you, every door will be opening. You can write down Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 8. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18 also. The book of Ezra chapter 8. Verse 18 to verse 22. In this place, that's part the fact that Nehemiah and Ezra, they are slaves in the land. The hand of the Lord that was upon them allowed the king and the people that surround them to favor them in rebuilding Jerusalem. I pray today, the hand of the Lord will locate you and you shall be highly favored. In the name of Jesus, praise the name of the Lord. Allow me to mention two more because of our time and we go to pray. The hand of God can strike. The hand of God can kill. The hand of God can be against a man or against a nation. And that is why I need to plead with you by the mercy of the Lord. Whatsoever you need to settle with God today, settle it in this service. So that that hand of God will not locate you for destruction. Our Father in the Lord used to say that many people, if God is going to answer that prayer, every enemy of my destiny die by fire. If God will answer that prayer, Many people will fall. And that is why God, by his mighty hand, he can kill. He can make a life. He can strike. You can write down the book of Job chapter 12, verse 20, Job chapter 19, verse 21. And Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9. And I will mention this as last point. Though I have time to give, but just permit this aid to fly. Jesus Christ, our mediator, is in the right hand of God. And that is why you need to relax. You need to feel secured anytime you are here or where you are alone. You are the moving Jesus. The Jesus is in you. And that is why nothing can move you. You can write down the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to verse 56, where Stephen was able to see Jesus Christ when he lifted up his eyes, sitting at the right hand of Jehovah. And Romans chapter 8, verse 34, make us to understand that after the appropriation of Jesus Christ here on heart, after his death, he resurrected and he was sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you, interceding for me. And that is why I assure you today, and I declare upon your life that every battle over your life shall perish inside here in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. 
How do you assess this hand? Our pastor has given us a dimension towards it. But I will just add three more. And we are going to pray our last prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. You, can, you cannot access God. There is no way you can access God when your own hand is not clean. And that is why the book of Psalm 24, verse 3 to 4, make us to understand that who shall ascend, that is, who shall climb, not who shall come to church, not who can, who can pray, but he's talking about who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord. The Lord has a hill where he wants you and I to be, where he wants every one of us to operate, but there is a dimension to it. There is a condition for us to be able to ascend that hill. And what is it? He said, who shall stand in his holy place? And the answer came in the next verse. He said, he who has what? Clean hand. The simple question is this. Is your hand clean? Bro, is your hand clean? That pornography on your phone, is your hand clean? Sister that is still going to, I mean, parties and do all sorts of things. Re reggae on Monday to Saturday, only on, on Sunday. Is your hand what? Is your hand clean? That is the singular question. Because you cannot imagine a father who wants to embrace a child and the child is full of filthiness and the child is full of feces and the child all over the body of the baby and the baby is running and the baby is running towards the father and the father is putting on a white apparel there is no way if you are that father if i am that father i will prefer to stand alone so that that child will go and get clean and that is the drawing point for us this morning. Before we can ascend, before we can activate the hand of God, before we can call down the fire of Holy Ghost to operate for us, our garment need to be what? To be clean. So, our pastors are, are, are giving, I mean, the prelude. And he said there is no way we can satisfy God without obeying him. So, we still go back to that place and seek a face in prayer. Even in worldly laws, they said, one of the maximum of equity is that he who comes to equity must do what? Come with a clean hand. And he who wants equity must do equity. So the question is this. If you want that hand of the God desperately to visit your situation, you need to do what? You need to wash your hand clean. And God has made provision through the blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross of Calvary for you and I, to get our hand clean. And this morning, I pray for you. You shall be made whole. In the name of Jesus, wherever you've been boxed down by the enemy of your father's house and by the devil, the Lord God Almighty will raise a standard through the blood of Jesus for you in the name of Jesus. Number two thing you need to do, our pastor has told us also, we need to desire this hand. You must sit down and imagine that, Lord, I need this hand. Lord, I need this, your hand. I want your, that your hand to be visible in everything I am doing. And by so doing, that hand will come upon you. The third point, which had been explained to us, is to pray for it. There is no shortcut for it. There is no shortcut to it. You can hear our sister. She was giving us an example of how when you imagine something, you must take a step towards, I mean, achieving that dream so therefore the first step for you this morning in activating that hand and calling upon the hand of god over our life start with you making restitution with god desiring that hand of god and praying that hand of god into your life as we pray this prayer the god almighty will appear suddenly in his temple and visit you by fire in the name of jesus bow down your head just under 30 seconds if you are here this morning and you know truly truly that you are not perfect with god you are not having right standing with god please don't look at your friend just raise up your hand wherever you are i want to pray with you now and i want to call you back home home into the kingdom of your father god bless your hand as i see the hand up god bless you god bless you my brother god bless you my sister blessed be the name of the lord please close your eyes as i pray for these ones please I, I close your eyes close your eyes father we thank you for this soul. We know you are the one who have made this soul. I set our thanks over this soul in the name of Jesus. You say after me where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I am not clean. Clean me by your blood. Redeem me by your power. Write my name into the book of life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. And I praise the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. I pray for you once again. The hand of the Lord will locate you as you are repenting from death to life. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Rise to your feet. Singular prayer, but you are going to pray it effectively. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. 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 Say and of the living God. Arise. Fall upon my life. That's the prayer. That's the prayer. And as you are praying that prayer, in every situation that you need God this morning, God will appear. I said God will appear. Say, I don't believe you, God. Arise. Fall upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Aha. Open your mouth and pray. Hand of the living God. Hand of the living God. Arise. 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 Fall. 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 He's falling. He's falling. Open your mouth and pray. Just believe. Yes. 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 Hand of the living God. Arise. Fall upon my life. Fall upon my life. Open your mouth and declare that hand of the living God. Arise and fall upon me. In the name of Jesus, hand of the living God. Arise and fall upon me. In the name of Jesus, arise. Open your mouth and declare that hand of the living God. Arise and fall upon me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we are praying. I pray that hand of the Lord will elevate you in the name of Jesus. That hand of the Lord will give you unusual speed this, this week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Let's put our hands together for Jesus and have your seat. God bless our pastors. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, please, if you have not given your offering, um, wherever you are, kindly raise it up and um, we pray. Father, we bless, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your people. Lord, according to your word, that we should give and it shall be given unto us. We ask that let this word of the scripture be activated in the life of your people in the name of Jesus and let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord while we give the offering. Please kindly listen to the following announcement. Um, please, this to our pregnant sisters. Um, immediately after the service, kindly see the pastor at the pastor's office. Please kindly see the pastor there. And God bless you in Jesus' name. And, and for those that want to join one group or the other, and you have not done foundational class, please, immediately after the service, kindly see our counselors, right? And they will guide you accordingly. And um, another thing which is very important, we are bringing back our spiritual school. Praise the Lord. Now, for a while now, we've stopped that. So, by the grace of God, another one will be starting by April 28th, okay, of this month, and at the School of um, House Fellowship. If you are excited, shout hallelujah. So please be in that category. Kindly see Pastor if, if I, okay? Pastor Fine is here. Please see him immediately after the service. And I want to encourage every one of us, like we normally say, please. We, the service starts 7.25 a.m., please. Not 8 o'clock, 
not nine o'clock. Try and be here. Okay, if you are going for an interview anywhere, I believe you will have arrived before the interview starts. And we are coming here to meet the King of Kings. So it's not expedient that you'll be walking in um, just by 8.25, 8.30. The service starts 7.25. So please try your best and be here. And as you do that, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're happy, shout hallelujah. Let's kindly rise up our feet as we take our confession before our family song. We're going to take our confession. Amen. It's at the back of the pamphlet. All right. If you are there, say amen. Okay. We're going to take it together. One, two, three, go. In the protective name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a sancta. The righteous run into it and they are saved. As from today, my life, family, and all that concerns me are secured in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This week, any power that wants to tamper with the, any of my belongings shall experience the wrath of the living God. In the name of Jesus, I declare I'm a winner. I do not fail. I can be not be stagnated. I cannot be denied good things. I enjoy supernatural promotion and divine assistance wherever I find myself this week in Jesus' name. This very week, in the name of Jesus Christ, everywhere I go, I stand out. The grace of God always speaks for me. I am a mystery to my enemies. The devil is frustrated over my case. This week, I enjoy unstoppable progress in Jesus' name. This is my declaration, and I believe it. Year 2024, my year of open doors and divine spirit. You're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we would walk till we come. There's no foe that can defeat us as we walk inside by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. We'll live to us. Father, the Lord here, in the person of Pastor Emmanuel Oladimeju is not around today, and his prayers are with us, and I believe wherever he is praying for us, that you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. I say you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, before we share the grace, amen, like the Bible tells us in the first King chapter 18, verse 46, it was talking about Elijah, that the hand of the Lord was upon him, and he ran ahead of Ahab. Okay, even unto Jesus, the hand of the Lord will come upon you this week in the name of Jesus. Oh, Luwambe, Luria, Yemi, oh, Ongbe, me fo, Ongbe, me sare, Oh, Luwambe, Luria, Yemi, oh yeah, Ongbe, me fo, Ongbe, me fo, Ongbe, me sare, Oh, Luwambe, Luria, Yemi, oh, 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 I decree that 
are the hand of acceleration of the living God. I wouldn't know whether you are expecting a particular contract. The hand of the Lord will give you unusual favor in the name of Jesus. The hand of the Lord will give you unusual acceleration in the name of Jesus. The hand of the Lord will give you unusual acceleration in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of my life. And we shall do in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We are going to shout three powerful hallelujah. One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you in Jesus' name. Please, the pregnant woman, kindly see a pastor at the pastor's office right now. Once again, if you know you are.